Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here, Smart Business Moves. I'm with Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hi, y'all. And we have a really special guest today. I've been a friend of mine for a long time. Uh, properly social distancing, wearing his PPE, Ernie Hartong. Hey, Ernie, how are you? Hey, I'm terrific, Tom. Thank you. This is my soapbox statement about wearing masks. I mean, I just, I, I've become a fanatic, really. I mean, I just think it's, it's, really important with what's going on in this unprecedented time and uh i think that uh i think that uh you know if, if you're not wearing masks you're irresponsible and if you're an owner and you're sending cleaning technicians into a home without wearing masks you're worse than irresponsible so that's my my pitch for mask wearing yeah we um you know, did our, our COVID class through modern cleaning. And we also touch upon this quite a bit within the PHC program. All the training that we're putting out is certainly emphasizing, you know, safety practices, all the proper PPE and masks during a COVID-19 world during this unprecedented time is certainly not optional. It, 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 it needs to be a, a an all time thing. You know, Ernie showed Tom up there. He he still had to get his own little unprecedented in there. You were so fast. Yeah. Hey. Well, Liz keeps scoring. I don't know if it counts if somebody else says it or not. <laughs> it absolutely counts. Well, that's why I titled my program the way I did today when you asked me to join you. Yes, indeed. You know, which probably would... Uh, be worth our while to go through what we're going to be talking about the rest of the week, just so we don't uh, forget. All I need to do is share a screen. I hope you guys were able to, I need to shut my. Go ahead, Liz. Okay. okay. <laughs> we're good. Okay. I hope you guys were able to join us yesterday, Courtney uh, Wisely. Uh, she's an awesome, uh, she's a powerhouse uh, entrepreneur. She's got uh, several things going all in the area of uh, residential cleaning. Uh, shared uh, a lot of neat software platforms that would be useful to uh, cleaning businesses to save them time and get better outcomes. So if you didn't see that, uh, you, you, you missed something. You need to go back and watch it. Today we've got Ernie and Ernie, you know, I'm going to, when we, we get started, I'm going to ask Ernie to, to, to go back and, and, and give us uh, his background. He's had a lot of uh, interesting uh, positions over the years and uh, knows a lot about the cleaning industry. Uh, Greg Shepard's going to be with us on, on Wednesday. Uh, and Greg's going to be telling us uh, about how he started a, or stumbled into created, wound up owning two house cleaning businesses in the same market with two different price points. So if somebody doesn't like uh, the service he's offering in one service, he refers them to, to one of his other services in the same market and um, probably an interesting model. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Who do we have on Thursday, Liz? That's my baby girl. That Shara, that's my baby girl. And how much does she sell per year, Tom, on average? Forty million dollars. That's four zero million. Over, over forty million. <laughs> over forty over million dollars in sales every year. Yeah, she's she's gonna share her top her top sales strategies. But you guys need to be ready because people think I like to talk. Tom, you've met my daughter in person. She talks and she talks fast. She's like. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, love, I'm sorry, I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> she just talks so fast. So be ready if you're if you're gonna be here on Thursday. Yeah, get 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 plenty of sleep Wednesday night and bring your coffee and uh, your undivided attention. Yeah. All right, and then I didn't give a a clue yesterday, Tom, for our secret guest. I forgot to give one at the end. Remember? Yes. Do we want to do that now? Yeah. Well, yeah. So I have two today instead. And I did write them down so I wouldn't forget. Well, the first one is 
our secret guest currently has COVID-19. So she's going to be a guest. She's not that ill, obviously, because she is going to be on the uh, webinar or on our Facebook Live. Um, so that's probably the first time we've ever had anybody that we knew had COVID-19 on our um, smart business moves here. Um, and then the second thing, what was the second one? Oh, my second clue. Where'd it go? Ah, her operations manager of five years moved and is currently continuing to work as a virtual employee. And so she has some information there as well. Okay. So the plot thickens. And yeah. today's only Tuesday. Yeah. Anybody have any guesses out there? Go ahead and throw it in. Not that we will confirm or deny anything, won't. but it's always fun to guess, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Denise, my daughter does sales for a company called Electric Guard Dog. It's electric fencing, and they put up, um, you know, security fencing, like for Walmart and those kind of places. It's so, really so kind we of cool. We, were, we looked at that for, for our office in North Charleston. We, I can hear you, Tom. I can't hear you. You can't hear me? I can hear you, Tom. You're fine. Okay. Um her, our office in North Charleston has fence around it and we had some break-ins and they basically wire like high voltage electric fence. And if somebody, and they've got signs up, it says it's electric fence. So you would really want to get in you know, pretty bad, but if you do, you'll, you'll, you'll get shot. Um, some pretty interesting. I talked to my insurance agent about it and there's some pretty interesting liability that goes along with that. And, um, it's kind of expensive too. So honestly, you know, I understand how she can do forty million dollars worth of sales because you know that's it, it's it's expensive technology. But uh, um, anyway, it's 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 really cool, and I'm looking forward to hearing it. Can you hear me, Liz? Okay, I just found out what's wrong with my computer. I what can hear it? you now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I. I have this thing, splash top streamer warning. I just got it. Our benchmark shows frame capture is very slow on this computer. As a result, you may experience slow screen refresh and high CPU in a remote ses session. It is an indication of insufficient video memory. Our support site describes several workarounds for this problem. And then Mirror Driver has proven to help with this issue. You can choose to install it now or later from Advanced Tab. I'm going to try it now. Are All right. You sure you're Let's go. Ready? Let's see. If okay. It you said know, install Mirror Driver. Do it now. Go ahead. What's the worst that happen? Download a virus and yeah. lose all your personal information. <laughs> do what I look like Derek? I don't think so. You probably have to do it a couple computer. weeks ago. Yeah. That explains it because your your, your oh, resolution is kind of fuzzy. You're not you're not oh, really? clear as, as okay. you used to be. It says the driver installation failed. Uh oh. That's this is tragic. All right. Well <laughs> we've had we've had bigger I guess I'm gonna problems. We're gonna power okay. through this, but we need to we'll we'll come up with some better solutions for tomorrow. Ernie, how you been? Uh, fabulous. Yeah. Any better? I couldn't stand Tom, it. Is, oh, that's from Denise. I'm like, yeah. Tom, what are you saying the F word for on Facebook? <laughs> but that's Denise. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Ernie, for, you know, I know a lot of uh, folks here know you from, 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 Arxy and your, 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 your work there, but your professional background experience goes back further than that. And it's, it's really diverse and interesting. Could you just share a little bit about, you know, my checkered past? 
Well, I started uh, really in college when I um, broke my ankle prior to football practice and became a sportscaster instead of playing football and uh, did that. Went to work for a couple of commercial stations uh, in the mid-Ohio Valley in Marietta, Ohio and Parkersburg, West Virginia. Um, and one day the mayor of Marietta knocked on my door and said the guy at the Chamber of Commerce is just decided to resign you ought to apply for that job i said why he says well first of all it pays fifteen hundred dollars a year more than you're making now and i said okay <laughs> we're in <laughs> the rest of and, not, uh, did it. right uh so the uh i was with the marietta chamber of commerce and went to the uh columbus chamber of commerce here in columbus ohio as the vice president of economic development uh left there and had the greatest job in the world yeah. For a guy like me that loves golf, I was a caterer on the PGA Tour. I ran a catering company that did corporate hospitality and concessions and that kind of thing on uh, for PGA Tour events, senior tour events, and LPGA events. Uh, it was a fabulous job. Uh, the only problem was my kids were two and six. Uh, and in 1985, I was gone from home 29 weeks, uh, mostly three weeks at a time because the golf tournament is a three week job for the caterers the week before a week of and a week after. Uh, so I just walked in one day and, uh, said, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm just missing too much stuff with my kids. And I had a national contract with a, a company called Bunzel, which is in the distribution business and, uh, called that guy up and said, Hey, I'm leaving. Here's who you talk to. Don't worry. You're not going to lose the contract. And he said, well, we need a salesman come and see us. And I said, come on, I don't want to sell paper plates. And he said, no, come and see us. And I said, okay. I said, I'll, I'll come and see you and we'll talk about it. But I said, I'll tell you right now, I want to get back in the Chamber of Commerce business. Uh, so I interviewed, he offered me the job and I said, okay, for, you know, lack of anything else to do, I'll do it. But I tell you, I may leave next week. I may leave in six months. Well, being a commissioned salesman, much like your daughter, Liz, I'm sure she is, um, it was a very lucrative kind of position. So my temporary thing lasted for about 11 years. <laughs> and then a little chamber of commerce, uh, the timing is everything. Uh, they were going to close our branch here in Columbus, and I was going to have to move to Cincinnati or Pittsburgh or someplace like that. Didn't really want to do it. Uh, so there was a little chamber of commerce in a little suburb called Clintonville that was looking for an executive director. And I said, great. I went and applied. My wife freaked out because of the salary cut, but we managed and put it together. And I did that for uh, about three years. And then lo and behold, uh, there was this organization called ARCSI and the volunteer president of that organization happened to be someone named Allison Palmer, who was in my wedding <laughs> as one of my wife's bridesmaids because she and my wife are sorority sisters. So she called me up and said, you know, geez, we're uh, looking for an executive director. Can you help us find one? And I said, sure. And so Alice and I would talk like once a week. And I said, get the board together. Tell me what you want. And um, so lo and behold, I uh, one night after doing a little research on ARCSI, I pulled a Dick Cheney on her. I said, mm -hmm. you know what? I found your guy. And she said, well, that's terrific. I said, yeah, it's me. <laughs> And she immediately said, well, we can't talk anymore. You need to call Chuck Terpstra down in Tampa because <laughs> I need to take myself out of this equation. So I talked to Chuck, did a couple of phone interviews with the board, and the next 10 years were history. And it was probably uh, the, the best 10 years of my career, quite honestly, uh, based you know on the people I met, the fun we had, and... Uh, you know, it took an organization that, quite honestly, back in uh, 2009 was struggling a little bit and uh, ended up with money in the bank and uh, became so attractive that uh, ISSA said, geez, would you guys be interested in merging? And Jeff uh, and I, at the president at the time, uh, said, you know what? I think we would. And there we are today. And then I decided I was going to retire because I was turning 70 and a geez, I was, you know, that lasted about a month. Uh, it was Michael Corleone. They keep pulling me back. Uh, and, uh, you know, you called me and we wanted to know if I wanted to help out with cleaning business today. And a fellow named Chuck Willis called me out of Chicago with the gifts of clean and uh, wanted to know if I would, you know, be interested in working with them. And so after a month of retirement and playing with the grandkids, I said, well, to both of you, I said, you know, I think I'd be interested in that. 
but on my terms, <laughs> which means if I want to go play with the grandkids, I do. But it's uh, it's worked out very well. I'm, I'm, you know, life is good. Uh oh, you're back. You're you're sounding okay. just for a second. Okay. Oh, I'm glad it was him this time and not me. I thought it was me again. Um, okay. So that's the life and times of Ernie Hartong. And, and here we are. And when you were in the uh, distributorship business, you, I mean, I guess part of what you were doing was like working with, with Jansan products as paper products. Yeah, well, I had some, we had some Jansan. We were mostly uh, paper and plastic. We did have some Jansan products, and I did work with a lot of, of small janitorial companies. And then I had a brief where I went to work for another Jansan company where I was actually stripping and waxing floors and uh, cleaning vacuum cleaners and disassembling them and putting back together and things like that. So I had a pretty good background in, in Jansan. So plus my association and, and Chamber of Commerce Management, so the ARCSI thing was really a pretty good fit. Awesome. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to be talking about customer service. And yeah, and it, it's, you know, it's, it's been a passion of mine and, and really since my very first real job, which means somebody else signed my paycheck, uh, was one of, uh, I was a gas station attendant back in the days when gas station attendants actually came out and pumped the gas and cleaned your windshield and checked your oil. And so that was about customer service. And, and I don't know if that really started it, but you know, I, throughout my entire career, I've always been passionate about, customer service, uh, even in the association business and the chamber of commerce business, I never had members, I had customers. Uh, and that's the way I viewed the folks that were paying their dues. I viewed them as customers. And uh, so I've been passionate about customer service for a very long time. And as Liz knows, uh, several years ago, I became a disciple of John DeJulius and the DeJulius company, uh, uh, who I think are actually the best when it comes to customer service. And a lot of what you're going to hear from me today is going to be straight out of the John DeJulius playbook, quite honestly. What's Bunzel? Bunzel is a distribution company. Uh, they do paper and plastic. They're big in the grocery industry. Uh, and they also serve smaller paper wholesalers and that kind of thing. They're an international company, about a $10 billion international company. Okay. So really huge. He wasn't exaggerating. See, All right. Got... Bill Gelder was here. Frozen. 23 cents a gallon. Donna, I paid that once upon a time. <laughs> was that back when you cranked it and it went up into the... No, no, I didn't quite have to crank it. But yeah. <laughs> You had to push it and then let the clutch out and it would go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think customer service is, is, you know, just, just paramount. I mean, if you really want to take price out of the equation, it's, it's having world-class customer service that does it. Uh, and I, there are stats that prove that I, I actually did do some research before I decided, uh, before the show today. And, and just some of the things from, from the Julius website is, you know, 50, 52% of customers will buy more and pay more if they think you have exceptional customer service. 85% are willing to, will. are willing to pay more to ensure superior service. Um, uh, Every dollar invested in customer service returns three. Uh, and here's the one that you really need to be concerned about. 85% of customers with a bad experience want to not only not have that uh, service anymore, but they want to warn others about that service and urge them not to use it. Mm-hmm. That's the key, and particularly in the days of you know all of the online uh, sites and everything else, uh, where you do reviews. I mean that that's where customer service is is the bottom line. 
un unhappy customers are more motivated to tell people that they're unhappy than happy customers are to tell people they're happy. There you go. So, I mean, it, it, it custom, it, it, you know, when I, when we talk about world-class customer service, I'm, I'm, I often think of the uh, comments of former Chief Justice Potter Stewart, the late Potter Stewart. When someone asked him about pornography, he said, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. Uh, and that's kind of what happens with customer service. You know, sometimes it's a little tough to define, but I think in this day and age with people like the Julius, we're beginning to define it more. But uh, we all certainly know it when we see it. Well, we were talking about that um, customer service is even more important right now during the pandemic. And wh wh why do you say that, Ernie? Why do you think it's more important now? And in what ways? Do you have any advice for well, the people on uh, business moves? Sure. I, I mean, I think that, you know, one of the ways that the, the Julius Group defines customer service is removing the customer's risk. And obviously removing risk is, is really important now. So, I mean, whether it's, you know, a matter of, you know, absolutely having your, your techs, uh, you know, take the proper PPE and wear the proper PPE. There's some things happening around the country that are really interesting. I, I saw on a Facebook post and actually talked to a vendor a few weeks ago. Uh, there's a cleaning company out there that is actually asking their customers to purchase microfiber cloths and it's you know relatively cheap he's going to deal with a vendor so it's maybe like 15 bucks or something like that for a stack of microfibers uh but they keep them in your home we're going to use these microfiber cleaning cloths in your home uh and then when we're done we throw them in your washer and boom boom boom, boom, boom but they stay with your home so that there's absolutely no risk of of cross contaminating with anyone else uh so i think that's you know the kind of innovative things people are coming up with around the country. Uh, and again, and, you know, in, in some cases, you know, we'll, we'll not use our vacuum cleaner or use your vacuum cleaner in your home. It may be a little tougher on your text. It may not be a great vacuum. Uh, but again, it's going to be the keep the customer happy. Uh, one not very good customer service comment that I saw on Facebook, uh, probably a month ago now, uh, Someone had a cleaning tech that tested positive, and this person was asking if they should tell the customer. And I about went through my computer screen. I mean, I said, absolutely, you have to tell the customer uh, that, you know, one of your techs has, you know, tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, I mean, that's not even a, you know, you don't even think about that. You just do it automatically. <laughs> so, so I think that, you know, again, is, is, you know, COVID-19 has, you know, absolutely presented some challenges. I, I, got, I got a question, though, Ernie. So, yes. I mean, on the one hand, it seems kind of obvious, but how far back do you go? Do you go back to every customer that in your whole entire company that they may have cleaned? Anybody that they've cleaned in the last week, in the last day, in the last month? <coughs> How do you make that determination? Yeah, I, I guess I would rely on the scientists for that, Liz, and, and say that, you know, if I, if, I had a, if I had a tech that tested positive, that I would certainly go back to at least any customer that she had been in their home in the last 14 days. I mean, 14 days seems to be the magic number. Uh, so I would go back and tell those people. Uh, you know, it, it, and, it, and it certainly, it, 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 if you've got the ability, it may even be smart to do it longer than that. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's just one of those things that's, you know, one of the ways that obviously the scientists talk about continually to stop the virus is, is the fact that, you know, we've got to identify these clusters or when things happen and get people tested. And so we can, can isolate them. And uh, certainly if I had, a, if I had a tech that tested positive, I would a let all those, First, you know, let all those customers. Secondly, test anybody in the company that she's come in contact with. Uh, that, you know, that's kind of a, a no-brainer as well. But, uh, you know, it's just you just have to deal with those kind of things. Yeah, I I also think that um, excellent customer service. The reason why everybody across the board doesn't provide excellent customer service is because. It is, it, it, 
it's it's not clear it's very floaty so it seems like yeah you absolutely should tell every single customer if one of your um technicians comes up with covid positive but there's another side is it possibly better customer service to only tell the people that could potentially be at risk so maybe making a judgment call based on yeah we were in the home of a 75 year old woman and we definitely want to talk to her and we might even want to pay for her to go and get a test maybe that would be better customer service than just blanket calling every single customer getting them worried for what could maybe be no reason especially since everybody agrees that you don't know who has COVID-19. Right now, I currently know two people, actually three people that are COVID-19 positive, tested and have zero symptoms. So how many people are walking around out there with no symptoms and could be? So mm, I don't know. But that's, I'm not Liz, that's, that's, that's why we keep getting the spikes at the end while you know the European community has gone down and they have to seem seem to have it somewhat under control here in the United States, it continues to spike because of those asymptomatic folks out there that are walking yeah. around that they don't know they have it uh, and they continue to spread it. And whether they don't wear a mask or they, you know, it's 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 the young folks and just like you know, I saw the mayor of Atlanta in an interview last night. She has it. Her husband has it. And one of her kids has it, and but they don't have terrible symptoms okay but they still have it yeah. um yeah. so i think it's, it's those asymptomatic folks that really are you know cause the greatest concern and part of the reason why and i'm not certainly not a doctor or a scientist but you know it's certainly part of why we continue to have the spikes in this country diane has a question for us she wants to know you know would you as a company owner pay to have the staff tested well, I'm not a company owner, so you two are. But if, if I were a company owner, the answer was simply yes. <laughs> well, around here, where I where I am, the tests are free. Yeah, so you, the only a lot of places. Is a lot of states, time. a lot of a lot yeah. of places, you can get the test for free. I'll tell you the other challenge, though, obviously, is in some places you can't get tested. I mean, it, you know, you look at the lines in in Texas where people are at yeah. testing sites, and the and the line of cars is a mile long. It's, it's difficult. We, well, and um, sorry, Tom, go ahead. No, we, we basically did the research and came up with a lot of different testing options within our, our various markets and um, when appropriate, you know, encourage our, our, our people to, to get tests and there's free options everywhere. And, you know, there are, you know, getting scheduled can, can, can be a little bit of a challenge, but we, we try to help with that uh, to what extent we can and, and make sure that they're available and, and, and facilitate that process for sure. But, but do you have to? No, Diane, you don't have to. But would we, yeah, Tom and I both would do that, but yeah. you don't have to do that. That's just one of those things that you get an option to do or uh, an option not to do as well. Letters between the tongue. It's true. It's true, Marlo, right? I could have a negative test today and tomorrow I could pop positive. It's not like you, you're positive now until the rest of your life. So a negative test is, again, for psychological safety, right? It's not actually for your physical safety. That's not the point of the. It, and that's why all of this is so tricky, but we're kind of getting down a funky path here. We wanted to talk about customer service today. There you and, go. Yeah, really, really wanted to talk about customer service and, you know, how to have excellent customer service in this, this um, uh, pandemic. What, what are some of the things that we can do to have excellent customer service? Well, I, I think, you know, that, you know, that world class customer service is something you want pandemic or no pandemic. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that that <coughs> to Julius is is adamant about is it doesn't matter what your management style is, whether it's top down, bottoms up, 
360, hire good people and get out of their way or whatever. Uh, customer service is absolutely top down. I mean, it absolutely has to be an obsession with the owner. Uh, it's just something that, you know, again, you have to be obsessed about world-class customer service to all of your customers. And that includes your client customers. And it also includes your other customers, also known as employees. Uh, you know, if, if, if an owner is not obsessed and presenting the same kind of customer service to the employees that she expects those cleaning technicians to apply to, you know, apply to the customer, it ain't going to work. Uh, I mean, I thought you had a great example of that, you know, a couple of weeks ago when you had Karina on and she said she said in a company meeting and said, you know, we want our customers to feel like they've walked into a five star hotel. And somebody came out, you know, looked a little puzzled. You asked them after the meeting, and that person said, I've never been in a five star hotel. I've never been in any hotel. I don't know what that means. Uh, so I, part of that is, is, you know, you need to be providing that training for your cleaning technicians so they understand what you mean by world class customer service. And they're on the same page. I think, you know, a great example, this has been, you know, four or five years ago, I heard from uh, Noriko Carnes out in Colorado Springs. Noriko took her entire staff to the Broadmoor. They, you know, obviously five-star resort in Colorado, and she took her whole staff over there so she could see what five-star looks like. And I thought that was a brilliant, uh, you know, move on Noriko's part to do that with her entire staff. I think you know, Stephanie Tucker Nesta does that too. And I think she does it annually. She takes all of her employees to a five-star meal so that they can see what five-star service looks like and what it feels like. So, yeah, I, I you know, I think that, that's a good investment yeah. right there. The other, the other thing that, you know, and again, I went back and, and listened to several the Julio's podcasts and, you know, read up on some old stuff that I had read a long time ago and that kind of thing. But one of the other recurring themes and everything that, that the Julius group talks about is the 98 2 rule. And, and actually, I was a uh, proponent of the 98 2 rule long before I knew DeJulius. Uh, and the 98 2 rule is simply this most often, we create a lot of policies that are because of the 2% that are always trying to scam the system. And in doing so, we penalize the 98%. Uh, and yes. you know, I've always had the philosophy in my Bunzel days and my Chamber of Commerce days, whenever, is I don't have time to worry about the two percent. I focus on the ninety-eight percent. And you know, one of the things that that to me is really the epitome of the ninety-eight two rule is a cancellation policy. What what's the real purpose of a cancellation policy? That customer inconvenienced you. So you're going to make them pay. That's a cancellation policy. And, you know, nobody signs up for your service with the intent of canceling. So if they do have to cancel, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. You'll never convince me, Liz. If you've got a cancellation policy, your customer service is not as good as it could be. You know, have, have I been have I been burned by the night? Argue, I gotta argue. We have a customer, and I think it's Atlanta, that signed up for a biweekly service to get a cheaper price, and then cancels every other cleaning so that they can have monthly cleaning, but pay the biweekly price because the biweekly price is cheaper. Well, <laughs> charge them monthly. <laughs> charge them monthly, <laughs> or fire the customer. You know, yeah, uh, you know. I'm saying I that, that, do some, but but you, but you know. Why penalize? I mean, have I been burned over the course of my checker career by the 98 tool rule? Sure, I have. Probably at least four or five times in 50 years. You know, <laughs> has it been catastrophic? Never. Wow. All right. And so, I mean, that's the thing that I say, you know, when I used, was with, with ARCSI and I'd have this discussion with somebody about a customer service issue. And I'd say, you know, well, why don't you try doing this? And they say, oh, we can't do this. Everybody would start doing that. Well, they won't. The 2% will do it, but the 98% won't. And so, I mean, I mean, Julius speaks to this much more eloquently than I can. But, I mean, you know, the basic thing is, you know, it, 
It's yeah. a myth that everybody's going to start doing it. They won't. The two percent will, it, but the ninety-eight percent won't. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of a case by case thing. I I, I I I like the idea. You have to ask yourself what is the risk of the two percent? What what type of harm can they do? I know, like on some commercial contracts, you have to buy a whole bunch of equipment and stuff to to get started and. You need some assurance that if they cancel, I mean, you can put you out of business if, if you know, you didn't cover that. Or oh. if I'm in the business of, of, of airport security, I need to worry about the 2% because those are the ones that are going to, you know, blow up an airplane. Right. Rate. So, with, with, you know, you, you uh, need to, you need to, you need to you, it whatever. doesn't work all the time, but in a lot of <laughs> most cases, it, 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 it certainly percent of the time. I'm with Ernie. It works 98% of the time. 2% of the time, there's a big enough risk that you got to worry about. But 90% you know, of the time, no. You know, quite honestly, I, that's one of the, you know, I mean, I've been, spent my whole career and I just don't worry about it. I didn't worry about the 2%. I mean, I, I'll be well, honest, I'll give you a really another example. When I first came to ARCSI, um, the board had a policy that if you signed up for the convention and you canceled, they were charging you a $50 cancellation fee. And I said, that's absolutely nuts. I said, we're not gonna, nobody signs up with the intent of canceling. And if we charge them the $50 fee, all they're gonna do is be mad and not come next year. <laughs> so, so <clears throat> above some objection from some board members, uh, we did away with the dollar cancellation fee. Uh, yeah, and it, sure, over over you know, on a bad year, we'd have five people cancel. You know, that was a lot. So, you know, what did it really do? So that's what we did away with. Yeah, I I work with um, a lot of companies, and one of the things that uh, I have seen many times is um, like the agreement that they want the customer to sign that they have to send it with uh, like an e-signature and it will be page upon page upon page upon page of policies and rules and procedures and all of them have come from that problem like no i've got a policy against this because one time seven years ago a customer yeah. did this thing right you know you probably don't need it to be you know we don't probably need pages probably six policies that cover 98 percent of your people is probably going to be good to go here's the thing about that liz is that i'm your customer I don't care about your other 500 customers. I'm an individual and I care about me and I don't really care what those other customers did to you. I'm not going to do that to you. And I don't really care about those other customers of yours. I care about me. I'm an individual. So I want your service agreement tailored to me. And, and I think that, you know, when you do that, sure, you have standard stuff. I get that. But, you know, the, the real key to world-class customer service is, that you and those cleaning technicians that go into that home have a very, 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 very clear understanding of what that customer's expectations are. And if you have that, you don't have to worry yeah. about those those other 52 pages in your service agreement. Uh, yeah, that's and number make, one. And make sure they understand that those expectations are being met and your customer understands that their expectations are being but sometimes you're doing the things that they want you to do and they don't even see it. So you right. certainly want to be telling them. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's, you know, one of the other, you know, I mean, all of that, you know, that is all important, but one of the, one of my other customer service myths is the customer is always right. No, they're not. The customer is not always right. Sometimes the customer is absolutely wrong, but they always are still the customer. Right. And you have the problem, you have the ability to solve their customer service issue. It's just a question of whether you want to do it or not, even when they're wrong. Yeah. And I'll give you an example of that. One of my things that happened just yesterday, uh, one of my retirement quote unquote jobs is that two hours a day, I deliver flowers for a flower shop. 
It's a great job. Everybody's always happy to see me. You know, I really love it. So we had a customer call up yesterday, and I, and I, the woman I work for is terrific, and she understands customer service. Called up and said, geez, I've had these flowers for a week, and they died. And she wasn't happy. And the owner of the flower shop simply said, well, we're really sorry you're disappointed. We will have you a new arrangement out there this afternoon. She didn't go into policies. She didn't go into the life expectancy of the p and &E. She didn't ask the customer how frequently she changed the water in the vase. She simply said, we're sorry you're disappointed. We'll have you a new arrangement out there this afternoon. Bingo. We got a so, customer for life. The one, the one thing I like to say is the customer might not always be right, but the customer always thinks they're right. So if you remember yeah. that Anything. they think they're right, you're, you're going to go a really long way helping them to, to get what they want. I hope that your florist did remember, or when you delivered, you did remember to tell the lady that these are probably going to die in a week too, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Setting those expectations is really no, but, important. <laughs> but, I, but ironically, when I delivered the first, when I delivered the first order, she wasn't home. So I texted her and I said, you know, your flowers are on the porch in the shade. It wasn't in the nineties that day. So it was fine to, you know, we could leave them on the porch in the shade till she got home. And I got a text back from her that said, Oh, they're beautiful. I love them. <laughs> nice. Well, but a week later she wasn't as happy. So, you know, yeah. yeah. So much of customer service really where the rubber meets the road is how do you deal with, what they call non-conforming issues. How do you deal with unhappy customers? And if you've got policies in place that allow you to make an unhappy customer happy, that's when you reach the highest levels of customer service. I think uh, one large yeah. hotel chain kind of did some of those studies and somebody had a great yeah. day, you would get customer service at some level, but if they had a problem, if you fixed it, they were even happier. Well, it depends on how much discretion you give those people that are out there in the field to make those decisions. You could have policies, but the last thing a customer wants to hear is what your policy is. They just want the problem fixed. Right. And uh, so, uh, I mean, again, if you've got somebody out in the field and an issue comes up and they've got the ability to solve that problem and they may not solve it the way you wanted them to or the way that you would have done it, but they solved the problem and made the customer happy. That's the important thing. And, you know, do, do your folks in the field have that kind of discretion? I'll give you the, again, I, I got a lot of customer service stories. I've kind of cataloged them over the years. A great one was with Avis when Ross Perot owned Avis. And there was a young guy that was in the Avis, you know, store in somewhere in Massachusetts, I believe. And someone had rented a car. This was a young college kid. He was, you know, working by, a, you know, at the, he was the assistant to the assistant to the manager or whatever, how they want to do that hierarchy. And anyway, a customer called in and they were, you know, 60 miles away and they had a problem with the car and they had a, or, you know, thing they needed to get to and they didn't have time to wait for the road service and yada, da, da, da. And, the, and this young college kid said, sir, don't worry about it. I will be there in less than an hour with a new car for you. Hung up, bump, took the new car to the customer, got it, you know, took care of the other stuff with the car that didn't work. Well, the manager of this particular Avis branch found out about this and fired the kid because he had dis disobeyed policy. Uh, Ross Perot found out about that, promoted the kid to general manager and fired the general manager because Ross Perot was, you know, believed in customer service and thought this kid handled it right. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, again, part of it is, is, and again, it, it's, it's, and I've had it happen to me in my career where I made a customer decision, which my supervisor didn't think was all that great. Uh, but I had some really great mentors and some great folks about customer service along the way. And it was a case of, you know, not chastising me for the decision I made, but talking about the decision and being glad that the customer was happy at the end of the day. But, you know, let's think about how we might have handled that a little differently and still made the customer happy at the end of the day. And, and part of that, you know, you, you got to train for that. Yeah, well, I agree. We are getting 
towards the end of, of, of our time here. Um, we've been talking over the last uh, few days about a big announcement that CBT was going to make. And since Ernie's here, it seems like it's the most uh, appropriate time for us to, to have that. This guy well, let me change masks and put on my cleaning business today mask. And, and uh, Oh, come on. You got that. I got, right. I got more mass than I know what to do with. I'm, I'm, I'm prepared. At any rate, uh, we have a great thing. Uh, these Facebook Live sessions and, and have gone very well. And, you know, I, I'm here and I tune into most of them just because I enjoy the conversations and the guests. And you've had just some spectacular guests on today, not included. Um, but at any rate, uh, we're going to take every other Wednesday, starting on July 15th, and, and day, Tom and Liz have been day, very day. Wednesday, July fifteenth, and the marketing department and the uh, of CBT, which is Ernie, has been talking all along about how do we, you know, do some things to make this um, cleaning these Facebook Live things more <clears throat> financially appropriate. <laughs> and but Tom and Liz have always pushed back on me and said, you know, look, we, we don't want to make these infomercials. And we agreed. We didn't want to make them infomercials either. So what we're going to do is we have a great deal for you. Uh, starting on July 15th, every other Wednesday is going to be deal day on our Facebook Live program from 5 to 6. And what we're going to do is we're going to have 10 vendors that will give you a four-minute video pitch about their product or service. Uh, and it's every, you know, any kind of product and service related to your businesses. And they're going to tell you about it, give you the features and benefits, and then give you a special deal that will only be available to people that are joining us for the Facebook Live. And that's it. Nobody else gets that deal, just the people on our Facebook Live program. But you're going to have to act. We'll give you 24 to 48 hours. Uh, we'll do it on Wednesday. You'll basically have until, you know, 5 o'clock Friday uh to act on the deal uh they're going to be special deals they're going to you know some of them are going to be on routine stuff some are going to be on special things uh we're going to leave that up to our vendors but we think that it's going to be a great opportunity for you and and even folks you know some folks you know they may not be able to give you a discount on your you know comprehensive insurance but if you get a quote they may give you some kind of you know premium or or you know you get a special iPad, tablet, or whatever. We don't know what that's going to be. We're going to leave that to the vendors. Uh, but at any rate, uh, we want you to know in advance, it's not going to be a 90-minute infomercial on one product. It's going to be different vendors talking about their particular deal of the day, and they're going to be legit deals. It's going to be fast. It's going to be quick. It's going to go fast. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see opportunities that, that, that you won't see anywhere else. Liz. All right. So the, the thing I wanted to say is the reason why we're doing this, you guys, is because every time we bring on really good presenters, you guys notice they always have something that they're doing on the side, too. There's something that they sell or there's something that they do. But we don't want these to be pitch fest. So we needed to give all of those people that have great things to sell. Courtney yesterday, we had Debbie, uh, you name it. Everybody that we have on has something that they're doing, but we don't want every day to just be a pitch. So every other week, we're going to be able to have a time for them to be able to make their pitch, but you guys will know about it. So you don't have to come every day with this idea that, oh, great, I'm going to have to sit through the freaking pitch to be able to get the rest of the information or just to be in on the conversation. No, on deal day, CBT deal day, every other Wednesday, come just for that. Also, it's not always going to be just less money. Some days there are going to be other things going on. And then Tom, give an example of what that might be. You want to talk about uh, PHC? Yeah, the P yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, we have the professional house cleaning uh, program, the PAC program. We talked about that for a while back, what, eight, late April, early May. Um, and a number of you guys signed up for that, enrolled in that. And that was back when we were on the old platform. And 
we spent a lot of time over the last X number of weeks finishing the program and the program's awesome for, for you guys who, who are there. I, I've got a lot of positive feedback on that. And we're in the new platform now. So we're ready to start talking about it and offering it to cleaning businesses who haven't had the opportunity to experience yet. Um, for you guys who don't know, it's uh, a class that basically gives the background information for anything that uh, a cleaning professional should know to, to, to function professionally. Um, gets into safety, gets into health, it gets into uh, the chemistry, physics, a lot of the whys behind uh, why we do what we do as cleaning professionals. And once you know that, you know, there's a lot of benefits in terms of reducing turnover and getting better performance and being more efficient, having less damage. I could go on and on about that. It's basically taking what we did with the uh, ACT program and boil it down into something that's more accessible. It's uh, seven classes to complete the whole program plus the uh, certificate completion. It takes about eight hours but you can take it one class at a time or even partial classes at a time because the classes have modules. So when your, your, your cleaning techs have an opportunity to do it, they can do it on, on their free time, but at the end they get a certificate. It's really, uh, it's really a cool program. It's accessible to everybody. The uh, rack rate for it, if you will, is $99, but we've got discount pricing. It starts with as few as six classes if you're a company, you can buy them in bulk and use them for over a year period. Um, if you buy up to like 50, you can get them for as much as 50% off. These are the uh, discount prices, 15% off up to from six to 15, 25% over 16, 35% over 26, 50% once you, uh, once you get over 50. Um, again, those are good for a year. Each company now has a portal, and this is something that's really cool, and we'll, we'll share this over the next day or two um, we get a chance where you'll see how you can manage enrolling your own employees and keeping track of their progress. So you're really kind of managing the program yourself or somebody in your organization. You can delegate that to. As far as smart business uh, moves is concerned, oops, this is another program. Um, we're getting 30% off. I didn't change my deck because we're doing something for another program, but this is a better deal, I promise you. Um, we're getting 30% off here for this program. If you enter SBM 30 at checkout, you get an extra 30% off all those other discount rates. This guy's only gonna be good till Friday though. So now you take this back around and you talk about uh, what we're gonna be doing next Wednesday. We're gonna have a promotion on Wednesday. We're gonna be, uh, PHC is, is gonna be offered as one of the deals on, on Wednesday. You will get a discount on Wednesday. It will not be 30%, it will be less than 30%. But there's gonna be some other goodies that are gonna go along with it that are gonna make it really interesting. Go ahead, Liz. It's not really a discount, you guys. Um, on Wednesday, it's deal day. So you don't want to count on always getting a discount. It might be a discount, but you might be getting some other kind of a deal. And that's what's going to be happening for the PHC program on next Wednesday. Today, or this week until Friday, you're going to get the cheapest possible deal. All right. So if you're looking to spend less money, Now's the time to do that. But if you're looking for some sort of a good deal where you're going to maybe get something else additionally, all right, then that you might be interested in purchasing something next Wednesday. But as far as best price discount right now, I just huh. want to make sure that everybody understands that deals don't necessarily mean low price. They Sometimes might mean you have opportunities. You get more stuff more value mm -hmm. yeah it can, be, it can be a combination of some discounts plus more stuff that's really yeah. what your opportunity is here we don't want you will if you use this discount code between now and end of day friday you get your 30 percent you participate in deal day on wednesday on the 15th which is like a week from tomorrow you will also get 
any additional goodies that go along. So really you're getting the best of both worlds. If you want to take advantage of this 30% off now, plus what we're going to be doing next Wednesday as, as, as one of the 10 offerings on deal day. Yeah, you'll get the deal for free next Wednesday. So you won't have to buy, you won't have to buy more classes or anything like that. Don't worry about that. Anything that you buy between now and Friday will be eligible for the, for the deal as well yep. on deal day. But you need to be yeah, there next Charlie. Wednesday. You need to be there next Wednesday, not only to see what our deal is, because you, you'll have a, a special code that you'll need to share with us to get it. But you also don't want to miss the other nine deals that are there. Yes, Ernie. Hey, I, I know where the clock is ticking. We're running out of time, but but back to customer service for just one second. There are two books that I want to recommend that yeah. if you know you want to make a dent or improve your customer service. There are two books that I that I think are terrific. The first one is called The Milkshake Moment: Overcoming Stupid Systems, Pointless Policies, and Muddled Management. Yeah. And it's by a guy named Steve Little, who was a former senior editor with Inc. Magazine. And I've known Steve for years, and I have another story about that, but we don't have time. Uh, but it's a great book. And uh, you'll understand the title when you read the first page of the book. It's called The Milkshake Moment. And the other one is the Julia's new book, The Relationship Economy. Uh, and I think that, it, you know, the, the kind of things that he points out in there can really be a game changer. So, again, you know, they're on Amazon or wherever you want to get them. They're available in audio or whatever. I don't get any commission for selling those, but I'm just sorry. Those, those are, are two, two really good customer service related books. Thank you, Ernie. Well, we are up against the clock. If you're interested in seeing more about our PHC, I've dropped a link. You can actually click on purchase and go through the process. Remember the uh, discount code that you'll need to get the extra 30% is smart business moves sbm 30. i will drop that here too to make it really easy we'll be back here tomorrow at five o'clock with greg shepherd we're going to hear about how you can run two cleaning businesses competing with each other in the same market to get more market share really innovative idea yes liz and just a really quick wrap up. So customer service in a COVID environment. Remember, remove the problems. Keep your people safe. Keep your clients safe. Make them feel safe. Give them what they want, not what you want to give them. And don't forget the 98-2 rule. All right. So those are your key takeaways today. Make sure that you follow those basic principles to have some much closer to world-class customer service. Ernie, thank you so much for your help and for your being conscientious and following all the uh, safe precautions during uh, this uh, unprecedented pandemic that we're uh, facing. Bonus points for Thanks, Tom. Thanks, guys. It was a pleasure always to be with you two again. You guys. Thanks thank so you. much, Ernie. I really appreciate it. You guys be safe. We'll see you tomorrow at five. Bye, y'all.